Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna be talking about solving basic equations. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about solving equations like this, where there is a fraction in front of the variable. Now, the number in front of a variable is called a coefficient. And uh, in this particular equation, we can take a couple different paths to solve for the variable. So there's one path that I'm gonna suggest that you don't follow, and there's another path that is the best way. So I don't want you to solve this type of equation in this specific way. I'll get to this in just one second, but let's just do a little pop quiz here if you want to participate. If you can solve this equation, okay, of course, without the aid of a calculator, go ahead and do it the way that you were taught or the way you feel comfortable with. Put your answer into the comment section. Of course, I'm gonna solve this and we'll talk about exactly what I'm talking about here in just a second. Um, also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go ahead and just take a, uh, take a look at the solution to this equation. And before we leave uh, this equation here, we uh, refer to this um, as far as the description uh, description of what type of equation this is. This would be what we call a one-step linear equation. So, you know, math has all these terms and, you know, they're kind of uh, associated with vocabulary. It's important that you understand those respective terms. So this is a linear equation, not a quadratic equation or something else like that. Linear equation. And to get the solution, it just simply requires one step. Other equations require two steps, and then other equations require multiple steps. But what is t equal to? Let's go and take a look at the answer right now. t is equal to 3 eighths. Okay, so how'd you do? Hopefully you got this right. Now, if you are at like at the pre-algebra level, okay, or maybe the algebra one level, this is certainly an equation that you should be able to handle. If you had difficulty with this, well, I'm glad that you're at this uh, video because we'll you know, talk about some ways where you can handle these type of problems. These uh, specifically, when you have a fraction in front of a variable, uh, a lot of students tend to have difficult, um, or get confused, let's uh, say rather, uh, to do these type of problems. It's not that hard at all. But if you got this right, well, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know exactly what to do when solving one-step equations. They'll be so, so proud of you. They might even take you out to lunch. Who knows? Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So here is the situation in question, right? So this is an example of what I want to talk about. Again, we're talking about a fraction in front of a variable, and this is going to be equal to some other fraction, but doesn't have to be. Uh, another kind of a, um, equivalent scenario would be, I'll just make up another fraction. Let's say 3 fifths x is equal to 7. Okay, so uh, really, I'm not, I'm not really concerned about this fraction. Okay, it's when you have a fraction in front of the variable. That can, and any, you can have a variable t, x doesn't make a difference. It's these scenarios right here. What do we do? Well, let's just kind of table this here for a second. Now, let's talk about something... Uh, very similar to this situation, okay? So here is an equation, 2t is equal to 8, all right? Now, how do you solve this equation? Well, hopefully most of you, um, you know, can solve this, and the solution is t is equal to 4. So some of you always say, well, you just divide 2 by both sides of the equation. You would be absolutely correct. But what is 2t? What does this mean algebraically when you have a 2 and a t? Uh, uh, next to one another. Well, that means multiplication, right? That's what that means, 2 times t. So to get t by itself, in um, uh, the basic concepts of solving uh, equations in algebra, you want to be thinking about what we call inverse operations. So, uh, for example, what do you think the inverse operation, the opposite operation of addition is? Now, if you said, isn't it subtraction? Well, you would be correct. How about subtraction? What's the opposite of subtraction? Well, it is uh, addition, right? So makes sense uh, so far. Now, what about multiplication? What would be the inverse of that? It would be division, 
Okay, and then what do you think the inverse operation of division would be? Yes, indeed, it's multiplication. So here we have two times t. So, you know, most uh, textbooks and teachers are going to say, okay, what you want to do is think of the inverse operation, which, of course, would be division. All right, so this is multiplication. You want to, be th you want to think division. So we'll apply division by dividing. What we need to do is divide because this is multiplication. We have to undo the multiplication, and we, do, and we undo multiplication by division, effectively. Uh, but here we'll divide both sides of the equation by 2. So we have 2 divided by 2 is what? Well, that is 1. So 2 divided by 2 is 1 or 1t, one and then 8 divided by 2 is 4. So remember, in algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. But the name of the game, the objective, is to get the variable by itself. In this case, we want to get the t by itself. We have a 2t, so how can we get a 2t to become a t? Easy. All we have to do is just divide it by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And, of course, we have 1t. But we never really write just one t. There is a one there. We just simply write that variable t like so. Okay, now why did I say all of that? Well, I said all of that uh, so we kind of set the table for um, how to approach this problem like uh, the one in question. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this scenario. So here we have two-thirds t equals one-fourth. So again, what is this operation right here? Well, isn't this multiplication? This is uh, two-thirds times t. So effectively, it's very much like this uh, uh, example problem I just did. 2t equals 8. We're talking, multi uh, this is multiplication. So we're thinking we need to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So in this scenario, you would say, okay, well, two-thirds times uh, t. So I'm going to think division. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by uh, two-thirds, right, to get the correct answer. So the way that looks like is the following. Okay, so here is our equation. Two-thirds t is equal to one-fourth. So uh, we're thinking the, kind of the right way, right, multiplication. We have a multiplication situation here, so let's divide. So we'll divide both sides by two-thirds. But when we do this, we end up with all this big mess right here. We have a complex fraction situation, okay? So two-thirds divided by two-thirds. Anything divided by itself is going to be one. But just take a look at kind of the mumbo-jumbo kind of going on here. You can easily make a mistake. But let's finish up the problem here. We have one-fourth divided by two-thirds. So to finish out that problem... T would be equal to one-fourth divided by two-thirds. Of course, we have to uh, flip this fraction upside down to get the reciprocal, to turn um, division into multiplication. So we have one-fourth times three-halves. Uh, one times three is three. Four times two is eight. So the answer is three-eighths. Okay, so now if this is the way you um, were comfortable doing the problem, this, in other words, this is the way you solved the problem and you got this correct, you know, that's still very good. Matter of fact, I'll still give you a nice happy face. Good job. Shows me that you know uh, what you're doing. However, there is a better approach, uh, less steps and a more direct approach to solve these one-step equations uh, when there is a fraction in front of the variable. In other words, something like this, okay? All right, so again, you know, you're gonna have to be, you know, focused when you're looking at various equations. If this was just a number in front of the variable, then you just do, you know, divide both sides. But as soon as you see a fraction in front of a variable like this and you're down to this last step, you don't want to think, oh, I'm going to have to divide both sides. We're going to say no. Let's not do that. Although you can, you will get the correct answer, right? It's just kind of the long way. It's like, hey, you're trying to go from point A to point B. We want to go the direct way. We don't want to go this route, right? Because you got better things to do than to just do a bunch of complex fraction stuff, whatever, right? So what do we want to do? Well, here is what you want to do. You want to think, oh, here is a fraction. So you need to flip and multiply. Okay, flip and multiply. Well, what does that mean? Well, how can I get a T all by itself? Remember, uh, to get a T uh, equals, I want to get T by itself. So there's two approaches. One, I could divide both sides of the equation by two-thirds. But there's another approach I could get, t all by itself, or uh, one t. 
and that is I can multiply, I can just flip this fraction upside down. So that's three halves. So look at that. So three times two is six, and two times three is six. Six over six is one. So there is another approach to get a one T, namely whatever the fraction is, you just flip it and multiply both sides. That is the much, much easier way to do these problems. Okay, you don't wanna do those one-step equations like that. So let's go ahead and see this in action right now. All right, so here is our lovely problem. Two-thirds t is equal to one-fourth. I'm like, oh, that YouTube math man, he said when I see a fraction like so, go ahead and flip it. So this is three halves. That's called the reciprocal. But remember, whatever I do uh, to one side of the equation, of course, we're multiplying. I have to do the exact same thing to the other side. you got to keep the equation in balance. All right, so that's all we're doing. And then here, 3 times 2, again, is uh, going to be 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 over 6 is 1. So that's going to be a 1t or t. And then all I have to do is this math right here, right? 1 times 3 is 3. 4 times 2 is 8. And I am done. Literally just 1, 2, 3 right there. So this is all the steps I had to do versus all this stuff, okay? All this flipping around and all that kind of good stuff like, like so. So anyways, um, sometimes... Uh, uh, you know, teachers stress this sometimes, um, textbooks, depending on the textbook you might be using or how you're taught this way, this isn't necessarily emphasized so, uh, so well, especially in some pre-algebra and algebra one courses. Okay. So a couple of last uh, thoughts here. One, if you are used to dividing both sides of the equation by the fraction and you're just, you know, like, Hey, I just want to continue to, to go that route. That's perfectly fine. Okay. As long as you get in the right answer and you understand, but again, as you progress in mathematics, I'm going to, you know, strongly suggest that you get used to solving these uh, one-step equations where there's a fraction coefficient in the way I just showed you. Now, how would I know that? Well, maybe it has something to do with the decades of uh, math I have taught <laughs> on top of studying math for decades. You know, it's just experience, right? So anyways, hopefully this video helps you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.